All right. So, hello and welcome everyone to the third week of interactive live sessions for the course on computational fluid dynamics for incompressible flows. The course, as you know, is of being offered by NPTEL. It's being instructed by Professor Amaresh Dalal from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at IIT Guwahati. Uh, my name is Devjit. I am currently a PhD scholar at IIT Madras and like every other week we shall be solving some problems together and discussing anything and everything related to the course. Okay, so with that let's get started. Uh, this week the uh, topic of discussion was the different discretization techniques and whatever errors can uh, creep in as a result of that. So. Our questions will be in that line as well. So this is the first question of today's session, which is a match the following type of question, which has, sorry, three different types of approximations on the left hand side, the A, forward difference approximation, B, backward difference, and C, central difference approximation. And on the uh, right hand column, we have three mathematical expressions, which correspond to these different kinds of approximations. So you have to find out the correct combination. So uh, you have to match the uh, items on the two columns with each other so that uh, you know the correct kind of approximation is matched with its correct mathematical expression. Then uh, there are some combinations of that. Uh, once you have figured out the correct combination, you can uh, uh, type in your response in the chat box or you can unmute an answer as well and if you have any difficulty understanding the question or if you want to discuss anything please don't hesitate please just unmute and uh, voice whatever you want to say okay and there is no hurry try to do this correctly but uh, there is one catch that I would like to urge everyone to participate in this and send in your response Okay, so we have only one response. So uh, we have two responses so far. Let's see what others have to say. So <clears throat> for the people joining in now, this is the first question of today's session, which is asking us to match uh, three items from two columns. So and uh, on the left hand column, we have different kinds of approximations. And on the right hand column, we have different mathematical expressions of them. We have to match the uh, approximation type with its correct mathematical form. Okay, and uh, there are different combinations possible. Once we have figured out the correct combination, we can pick them out from the four options given below. And uh, then you can type in your response in the chat box or you can unmute an answer as well. So we have five responses so far. Let's see what others have to say. So a lot of people seem to be favoring option D. Is there anyone who would like to contradict with that? Okay, so let's have a look at the solution and it is indeed option D. So those of you selected, you did it correctly. So let's figure out how to do this. So uh, forward difference approximation. We So if this is our template, we have point I, we have point forward to it, that is I plus one, and one backward to it, that is I minus one. So in forward difference, what we do is we take the forward difference. So and this is all in reference to dou f dou x at i. So dou f dou x at i, if we are using forward difference, becomes f i plus 1 minus f i divided by delta x, which is option 2. Then backward difference, we use f i minus f i minus 1 divided by delta x, which is option 3. And 
central difference we use both the forward as well as the backward points so this becomes f i plus 1 minus f i minus 1 divided by twice the delta x and delta x is the difference between these points and uh, we are assuming uniform spacing so both these distances are delta x and this happens to be option 1 so our correct combination should be a2 b3 and c1 as indicated and that's why option b is correct so it was a simple question to get started with any questions on this okay so hoping everything is clear we will move along we move on to question number two now so this is uh, you have to now read the three statements a b and c correctly uh, carefully and then figure out which statement correctly describes the lax equivalence theorem so this lax equivalence theorem connects uh, three different properties of uh, finite difference approximations which is uh, convergence stability and uh, consistency so one of these three statements might be correct or you can also pick option D which says that none of these are correct so the statements goes like this so statement A is if a solution scheme is convergent and stable then it will be consistent option B is if a solution scheme is stable and consistent it has to be convergent and option C is if a solution scheme is convergent and consistent then it has to be stable so which of these is true or is none of them true in which case you have to pick option D so once you have read this uh, statements correctly and figured out the correct one you can type it in the chat box or you can unmute and answer as well we have two quick responses let's see hello yes i'm sorry your voice is breaking up I'm sorry sir, nothing, uh, I'm not able to make out anything from your voice, it's entirely breaking up. Was that a my problem? Can others hear him clearly? Oh, okay, then it might be my problem. I'm sorry, like it's still breaking up. Anyway, it might be easier if you type it in the chat box. I'm really sorry, it seems to be a problem from my end. Okay. So anyway, let's get back to the question now. If you have any doubt or you want to say anything, maybe it's better if you type it in the chat box. So as of now, we have two responses to this question. Let's see what others have to say. Which of these statements correctly describes the lax equivalence theorem? 
is it if a solution scheme is convergent and stable then it has to be consistent or is it if a solution scheme is stable and consistent it will be convergent or is it if a solution scheme is convergent and consistent it will be stable okay so we have another response in favor of option c so option b and c have got some responses let's see what others have to say i will you know strongly urge everyone to send in their responses don't just uh, you know view these lectures for uh, in a one way fashion so for that the <laughs> recorded lectures are there those will be one way because it's really difficult for uh, <clears throat> that to be a two way uh, interaction <clears throat> but these sessions are supposed to fill that gap and have a two way conversation between me and you so you have to participate and really uh, respond okay so let's have a look at the solution so option b is correct so this is what the statement of lax equivalence theorem is that if the solution scheme is stable stable meaning the errors they reduce over uh, iterations and consistent meaning that if uh, the uh, if the uh, finite differences which are uh, finite discretizations if they tend to zero if i take smaller and smaller discretizations then the uh, finite difference equation should uh, convert into the partial differential equation that we originally want to solve so this is what consistent means so lax equivalence theorem says if it's both stable and consistent then it has to be convergent as well convergent meaning the solution approaches the uh, or the numerical solution approaches the exact solution of the pde this is the meaning of convergent so this is simply what lax equivalence theorem states so i hope there are no doubts regarding this if you have anything please uh, let me know yeah shall we move along let's move on to question number 3 now so here uh, we are first of all defining five variables p f n r and d which mean different things so p is the exact solution of pd uh, f is exact solution of fd that is finite difference equation n is the numerical solution of fd from a real computer with a finite accuracy so that is n and r is the round of error and d is the discretization error now there are several uh, relationships between these variables given uh, in the four options below you have to pick out the incorrect option so there are some correct ones and there is one incorrect one you have to find out which one is incorrect there is no rush take your time
And once you have figured out the correct solution, you can type it in the chat. Okay, good. We have one response so far telling that it should be option C. Let's see what others have to say. Okay, we have more support in favor of option C. So a good way to start this would be through definitions of the errors. So a round of error is basically the difference between the exact solution of an FD and, you know, uh, let's say if there was a computer with infinite accuracy, then whatever the numerical solution would be compared to uh, that solution using a computer which has a finite accuracy. So it introduces the round of error. So this is basically f minus n. So f is the exact solution of fd and n is the numerical solution using a real computer with finite accuracy. And then we should look at the discretization error d which is the difference between the pd and the fd. So the difference here is between p and f. So straight away we can see that option A and option D are correct because these two are true by definition. Then we can use combinations of them. So let's say, uh, okay, so I can take, so from here, from this equation, P is basically equal to D plus F. Then we can take combinations of this, the, let's say for the first one, for C, I can say, uh, I can use R plus P. So R is F minus N and uh, plus P, P which is D plus F. So here it basically becomes 2F minus N plus D and this is not equal to D plus N as shown. So C becomes the correct option. Just for checking, we will look at option D as well, which is R minus P. So R minus P, we can use F minus N, which is R, and then subtract D plus F from it. So D and minus F. So F and F gets cancelled, and this becomes, sorry, what happened here? P is P minus F, so P should be D plus F. If I use R minus P, R is, oh sorry, R is N minus F. So here F and F gets cancelled, actually does become this. And minus F, minus D, minus F.
these two don't get cancelled and this is not equal to t minus n. I hope this is t minus n. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution. Yeah, so it is option D that is incorrect. So this becomes N minus D minus 2F, which is not equal to D minus N as shown here. So this option is incorrect. The rest of them are correct. And it's option D which should be the correct solution in this case. Did anyone say option D? No, everyone <laughs> selected option C. So I hope uh, the solution method is clear. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? So A is correct. B, B is correct, these two are correct by definition itself and uh, option C is correct using uh, some uh, uh, combination of R and B, we can show that uh, it becomes equal to N plus D, right? So here this F and this F gets cancelled and we get R plus P is indeed equal to n plus d which is option c so option c is also as a statement is it's correct but we have to pick out the incorrect option now r minus p on the other hand does not become equal to d minus n as indicated here so that's why uh, this is the only incorrect option and as, since we have to pick, pick the incorrect option we should pick option d Does that make things clear? Any questions, anyone? Okay, so if not, we will keep moving along. We'll move on to question number four now, which is asking us, what is the order of accuracy for forward difference approximation of second order derivatives? So second order derivative. And we have to use a forward difference approximation. If we use that, what is the order of accuracy? Is it option A, 2? Is it option B, 1? Is it option C, 0? Or is it option D, insufficient data? We have one quick response, two quick responses in favor of option A. Let's see what others have to say. There's no rush. You have to uh, really read in between the lines when uh, facing these kind of questions. Okay. So read the statement very carefully. We have a couple of responses. Let's see what others have to say. More responses in favor of option A.
Okay, so now we have another response in favor of option B, saying it should be 1. Let's have a look at the solution. The solution is option D, insufficient data. Why? Because I have, okay, <laughs> now someone has responded option D. Yeah, so you're correct. Thing is, <clears throat> I have not mentioned the number of points which are used for uh, estimating the second order derivative. If I use uh, three points, say I, <clears throat> I plus one and I plus two, then indeed the second order derivative that I compute will uh, you know be first uh, be second order accurate so in that case the truncation error would be delta x square and if I remember this correctly this should be 3 fi minus 4 fi plus 1 minus fi plus 2 plus fi plus 2 divided by delta x squared. Uh, but if I take let's say four points, so i, i plus 1, i plus 2 and i plus 3 as well. In that case, so here finding out this coefficients is a different uh, problem altogether we can you know use uh, different techniques a polynomial technique then taylor series expansion and matching coefficients and using a general approximation as well so in this case i'll use i'll keep things down to this general approximation only so i'll say alpha fi plus beta fi plus 1 plus gamma fi plus 2 and let's say zeta f i plus 3. So in this case the order of accuracy can be more than delta x square. So if I am not mentioning the number of points that are being used the order of accuracy actually depends on that. Just saying forward difference doesn't ensure what would be the uh, order of accuracy. So that's why in this question the data was not sufficient right does that make things clear i hope i'm clear about the logic behind d being the correct answer here any questions on this Sorry. Yeah, so this made sense, did it? Okay, so we will move along. We will move on to question number 5, which is asking us what is the main purpose of using a non-uniform grid? So we know for a fact that we have to use non-uniform grids no matter what. But why do we use that? Is it to res option A to resolve sharp gradients, option B to get higher order of accuracy, option C to ensure convergence, or is it option D all of the above? Okay, so we have one quick response in favor of option D that is all of the above. So what is the main purpose of using a non-uniform grid? Okay, so we have a few responses and they are divided between option D and E. So option A is only to resolve the sharp gradients and option D is all of the above.
Okay, so let's have a look at the solution. The solution is actually only option A to resolve uh, sharp gradients. So the uh, main thing is we have to use the uh, we have to focus on the main purpose only. So convergence does not really depend on whether you, we are using a non-uniform grid or a uniform one. And uh, the option B that is to get a higher order of accuracy. This is indeed wrong because we have seen that if we use a non-uniform grid then the uh, uh, let's say for uh, uh, calculating the uh, second derivative with using central difference we see that if we use a non-uniform grid then the order of accuracy becomes uh, uh, order of r minus 1 into delta x which is first order instead for uniform grid, it was delta x squared, which is second order. So the order of accuracy actually reduces when we are using a non-uniform grid. So option B is wrong. And option C is it's not always true that using a non-uniform grid itself will ensure uh, convergence. The main reason why we, we use it is to resolve the sharp gradient. So let's say if I have a boundary layer like this, then all the uh, velocity gradient is within this region only and in this region there is no gradient the velocity is the same equal to u infinity whatever the free stream velocity is so if i am trying to discretize this i will use lot more points in this region where there are high gradients and use very uh, you know sparsely spaced points in this region where there are no such uh, sharp gradients. So the main reason is to resolve sharp gradients. That's why option A should be the correct answer. Did that make sense? Any questions, anyone? Questions, comments, remarks, anything? Okay, so if there are no questions, we'll move along. We'll move on to question number six, which is asking us as the number of grid points increases, what happens? Option A, round off error decreases. Option B, truncation error increases. Option C, both A and B. Or is it option D, none of the other? So we have seen the round of error, which is the difference between, uh, you know, the solution, the exact solution uh, of the FD, that is F, and the uh, numerical solution using a finite uh, computer, that is N. And the truncation error was the same difference between, uh, sorry, the truncation error was the difference between this and the exact solution uh, in this. I'll just go back to check if I'm correct. N minus F and F minus D. P minus F. So we have a response in favor of option C. Let's see what others have to say. So the question is, as the number of grids increases, so the length of my domain being constant, so let's say this is the domain that we're solving in, and we're discretizing it into some uh, grid points separated by, let's say, delta x. So the number of grid points is L divided by delta x. So what happens when n increases? What happens to r? What happens to t? Okay, so we have responses in favor of c, d, b as well. So quite a, 
divided crowd. Let's see what others have to say. We'll wait for some time and I'll urge everyone to send in your responses here. So as it turns out, the round of error is actually proportional to the grid points, the number of grid points, or in this case, I'll write n. So as n increases, the r also increases. So as a result, option A is actually in And the truncation error, that is actually proportional to delta x. Now, as uh, n increases, delta x decreases because see that comes from this relationship that if we are using a larger number of points, the uh, difference between the two points or the grid spacing would go down. So delta x decreasing would actually mean t also decreases. That is the truncation error also decreases. As a result, option b is also incorrect. And both A and B obviously incorrect. So none of the above should be the correct option here. So if you look at the solution, it is option D that is correct. So those of you who picked option D, you did it correctly. Congratulations. Okay, only one person did. <laughs> nice. So for others, I hope I could explain it correctly. Why? It happens, so let's go back and look at the solution. Any questions on this? Was the logic clear behind this? Could you understand the reasoning how to, uh, you know, end up at the correct solution here for this question? Okay, good. So now we will move on. We'll move along to question number seven, which is asking us that it is basically telling us that a fourth order accurate scheme. So fourth order accurate scheme is being used here, which is given by so f double dash basically means the second order derivative of x that is equal to this this expression this big expression which says a into f x plus 2 h and okay so here h is basically delta x right so this entire thing a b c d e are coefficients so you have to pick the correct values for a b c d e without explicitly solving it so there is some property these uh, coefficients of discretized derivatives show which you have to use here to find out which one of these a b c or d can be possibly a correct solution and you have to tell me the reason as well so two of you already said it's option a that's okay but what is your reasoning behind it Yes, correct. So all of you who are writing that the sum of the coefficients should add up to zero. That is the property which is uh, followed by these discretization schemes again and again. So there must be some logical explanation as to why, but this uh, behavior is always followed. So if you take you know the sum of the coefficients in all these cases, we will start with D, let's say. So here 30 minus 32 minus 2, so this is minus 4, for this one it's huge, so 32 plus 30, which is 62 minus 2, so this is 60, then if we take sum of this, so it's uh, plus 2 plus 2, so 4, 
and only for this one does it become zero. So it's option A which is seeming more likely to be correct. And it is indeed correct. Right, so that's the logic that the sum of these coefficients of A plus B plus C plus D plus E should go to zero. Now there can be multiple combinations of this which go to zero. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that any combination which goes to zero would be the correct discretization of it. But the, it, it's the other way around that the correct discretization of it would follow this law. So this is just to verify. This is not to inform you that what is the what should be the correct discretization. No, but once you have done it then you can check that okay is it going to zero or not if it's zero then that gives you some confidence that okay so my way of discretizing uh, is highly uh, likely that it's correct okay any questions on this all right so if there are no questions we will keep moving we will move on to this next question now. Okay, so here we have to find out the order of accuracy. Sorry, order of accuracy for the mixed derivative that is this one. Dou to f, dou x, dou y, using a central difference technique using the points as shown in the figure. So there are a lot of points shown in the figure. I'll pick out a few of them. So I'll pick them out in dark blue. So I'll use this point, this point, this one, and this one. The ones which I marked by tick mark. So using these four points, if I uh, find out the uh, mixed derivative, if I express dou to f, dou x, dou y using at y, at point i comma j, using these four points which I shown here what would be the order of accuracy the order of accuracy meaning delta x to the power n and delta y to the power n what would be the value of n b okay, so we have a few quick responses all telling us that it should be option b 2 right So let's have a look at the solution. The solution also says 2. <laughs> okay, so how do we get here? The easiest way of doing this, I'll use the easiest way only and not the other way. So this at i comma j can be written as dou dou x of dou f dou y at uh, so we are now discretizing with respect to x. So let's just write this in this step. Then we can write it should be dou dou x of so dou f dou y at i comma j. Now uh, dou f dou y at i comma j can be written in two ways. So it can be uh, in one way, so it should be uh, the f at uh, i comma j plus one, and we are using central difference here. So f at i j minus one divided by two delta y. Now we will take this two delta y and everything outside. So I'll take 1 by 2 delta y outside and now we are left with dou f i comma or sorry I'll just write it this way dou f dou x at i comma j plus 1 minus dou f dou x at i comma j minus 1. So and coming here now for the lack of space. So I have 1 by 2 delta 
y outside this do f do x at i comma j plus one that is at this point. Sorry, no. Which is at this point. So this for this I have to now if I use a central difference in x I have to use these two points now. So do f do, uh, do x becomes f uh, i plus one j plus one minus f i minus one j plus one divided by delta x and plus so for this one at i j minus one I have to use this point and this point. So here now it becomes f i plus one j minus one and this is minus uh, i minus one j minus one divided by delta x. So in the end it becomes two delta x delta y and here we have i plus one j plus one minus again okay, these are both two so it should be four also. I minus one j plus one minus i plus one j minus one plus i minus one j minus one. And remember while doing this we introduced an error of uh, delta y squared and while doing this we are introducing an error of delta x squared. So finally we will have delta x squared comma delta y squared. So the order of accuracy is 2 as option b told us. Right? Any questions on this? So we are using central difference twice using two points only. So the order of accuracy over there is just two. So since it's a mixed derivative, we have to use four points for the two directions x and y. And as a result, we have this. Any questions, any doubts? Okay, if not, we will move on to the last but one question of today's session, which is asking us which scheme is more suitable for use in boundaries of a solution domain? Is it option A, forward difference scheme? Is it option B, backward difference scheme? Is it option C, central difference scheme? Or is it option D, both A and B? So let's say if I have a domain something like this. I'm asking what is the solution scheme for the points at the boundary of the domain. Okay, so we have uh, responses in favor of option A as well as in favor of option D. Let's have a look at the solution. Solution is actually option D. So option A is not incorrect, it's correct, but option B is also correct. And so option D saying that both A and B are correct should be the proper solution in this case. So any domain like this, so, sorry, any domain like this, if I use and for a boundary, there is no points on the outside of it. So I, if I want to find any derivatives here, I have to have no other option but to go inside and try using the points inside of it. So depending on the direction you pick, uh, either forward difference scheme or backward difference scheme would come into play. And 
these become more suitable for the boundaries at the solution domain. So in a 1D sense, so let's say if I discretize this 1D line into let's say this many points. So for this boundary, I have to go this way. So if I pick two points, so I have to use these two for discretization and I'll use forward difference approximation then. And for this boundary, I'll have to go inward and pick these two points and use a backward discretization then, backward difference scheme then. So these are the two schemes which are suitable in the boundaries. Okay, that was an easy one. I hope there's no questions, right? Any doubts, anyone? Okay, if not, we will just move along to the last question of today's session, which is regarding the different operators, which, so these are the different operators. Sorry for my handwriting. <laughs> so these are the different operators which operate on uh, FIs or you know the any variable that we are trying to discretize. So it provides us a shorthand of writing big discretization equations. So for small partial differential equations, it is not really much of a problem. But try to think that. In the real scenario, when we are using three dimensions and unsteady problems, and there are a lot of additional terms involved, then uh, the finite difference equation would become very long and very clumsy if we do not use shorthand operators to, uh, uh, you know, make the equations more concise looking. So there, these operators become really useful. Now. We learned a few of them here, and so you just uh, so in this match the following type of question, you just have to match uh, each shorthand operator to its fully uh, you know uh, fully expanded form in the right hand column. And once you have figured out the correct combination, you can pick the correct solution from here from the four options given here A, B, C, and D. Okay, we already have a very quick response in favor of option C. Okay, <laughs> let's see what others have to say. <laughs> okay, the quick responder has uh, withdrawn his <laughs> response as well. Okay, someone else says it should be option D. Okay. Okay, a lot of people are now coming in coming in and showing support in favor of option D. Okay, so let's get through this one by one. So the first operator, EN, is basically the displacement operator, which just displaces FI to FI plus N. So this basically means fi plus n, not arrow, I'll just simply use an equal to sign because that's what it means. Right. So which one is this? So option 2. So a should be 2. Now this one, delta plus fi. So delta plus fi is the forward difference operator. So delta plus fi means fi plus 1 minus fi. Which one is that? It is option 3. So b is 3. Now c is this delta bar fi. Delta bar fi means the central difference. So fi plus 1 minus fi minus 1. So c should be option 1. And option d is and okay so delta operator itself acted upon fi would give you fi uh, plus half minus fi minus half now this is so these half points actually do not exist but delta is defined in this way so that we can cleverly use delta squared to define a 
second order uh, central difference. So this becomes f i plus one minus two f i plus f i minus one. So option D is four. So the correct combination, as I see, should be uh, a two b three c one and d four. Does any of the options match here? A two B3, C1, D4, yeah, option C matches. So let's have a look at the solution. And it is indeed option C. Okay, so those of you who responded with option C uh, and uh, retracted their uh, response as well, you had done it correctly earlier. So, okay, good. So this should be the <laughs> correct solution, yeah. It was C indeed. So this was the last question from my side. So is there any, if there are any questions from your side, this is the time to ask. Okay, so we have a question in the chat box. Is the session being recorded? Can we get the recording or at least the practice problems? Yeah, so these are recorded and uh, the, uh, the uh, these uh, videos will be uploaded to YouTube as well. So in the course page, you will find uh, one tab called problem solving sessions. So if you click on that, that should redirect you to the YouTube uh, playlist, which has the recordings of these interactive sessions. So you can go and see all there. Okay. So thank you all for being so uh, enthusiastic and participating in the questions. So we will meet again next week from 6 to 8. So see you then.